Hey everyone, last time I made a video to discuss martial arts, I talked a little bit about my personal upbringing and what I consider a backwards evolution. Now, um, martial arts has never really been a global thing before like it is now, where um, in old times maybe you'd be stuck in one place so you get what's there. Kind of like religion and everything else, right? So now um, in modern times we can uh, experience every... Um, every kind of martial arts there's and plus there's a lot of um, really great information that's free to us here on YouTube as well now um I think it'll be fun to make more videos talking about martial arts for now I'm gonna have to do more solo training until I can find a partner and another thing I I've been uh, thinking about doing is finding a jujitsu dummy so I could kind of keep up my vocabulary as well until I can get back to class so I'm like a um there's a book called The Independent Warrior, so maybe I'm an independent warrior, and if I were able to start a program, it would be to help other, you know, so-called independent warriors to, to develop themselves. So I think everyone should have their own personal path, but there are going to be um, certain ingredients that all martial arts need to have. And so that would be, for example, um, the right exercise, um, uh, training for functional movement, and then in the martial arts itself, I feel like what I've been really missing at the beginning was some just good basic wrestling training. And I really think boxing is a good one for beginners to just learn how to to be able to hit hard and avoid getting hitting to start out before adding anything else. And so that's why I feel like my evolution's a little bit backwards. I feel like I'm going to be starting over again. So it's almost like I went up on levels. I, that's why I say I'm just a fat old black belt. I went through all these levels only to put on another white belt again. So by going back to, say, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, or going to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for the first time, um, I've had to put on a new white belt. And um, it's been a big help having other training, but most of my training is stand-up, Asian, you know, karate-like uh, martial arts. But um, it did help me eventually be able to interpret what they're showing us. So um, my thought on Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, by the way, is it's a really great way to to deepen your understanding of grappling because um, the most important training we're going to want is on your feet, you know, how to grapple on your feet. But once you hit the ground, it seems like every everything matters that you do. Every single move matters that you do. And so if you do practice down and ground training like that consistently, but then come back to the stand-up training, that's where you're going to find that it helps you to reinterpret all of your stand-up training. So let's say you've been doing um, Tai Chi and Kung Fu for years and you have so much of an understanding of where you're at. But once you've done Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a while, then you're going to come back to that Tai Chi and, and Kung Fu and have a better interpretation of it. See, so that's the benefit I'm getting by not being so single minded that I'm like, all I do is Shaolin and nothing else. Or, or I feel really bad for those people that go, I'm just going to do Taekwondo and nothing else because you're missing a whole world of um, training that if you want to be a a true master you probably need to get through these rounds now I like to say that um, there are as many styles as there are masters because if you look at the long list of martial arts styles there are out there it's really just because somebody wanted to brand his own style of martial arts but it still has like for example all those different kinds of karate still have the basic ingredients of popular karate in fact there's so many systems all using the same forms etc etc they're all really doing the same stuff but with one guy saying but this is how i think you should train so he might add his um, own personal uh touch you know so it's kind of a good idea to have multiple teachers for that reason just because we are all trying to learn the same thing and everybody helps you know give you a different perspective from where they are so you really just want to have a broader perspective eventually Yes, I think um, some great ingredients like that I really want to get a chance to just go to a place um, when I can that just does boxing. So I might plan on just doing just some boxing and then I want to also have a chance to go someplace that just does wrestling and then come back to the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and then if I had a chance I would definitely continue training on the Shaolin Kung Fu because I feel like one helps interpret the other and back and forth and some of my uh, my uh, training partners in jiu-jitsu have noticed how quickly I can pick up and interpret movement faster than a normal white belt, even though um, I still lose a lot of matches in sparring. So the thing to get good at jiu-jitsu is really you got to spar all the time, 
even if you um because if you're just like filling your head with knowledge then you what they call you become top heavy you know all this stuff but you're not integrating it through your uh practice on the mat so i didn't get as much mat time as i'd like because um i have some small injuries that have been bugging me and i felt that before i could go back to jujitsu i should get my weight down quite a bit and um i learned different ways to manage these injuries so i can continue to participate because that is so much fun let me tell you what but anyways when i talk about stand-up training um i kind of mix and blend together my ideas so this is kind of how i'm being built so i kind of want to you know if you're going to uh, watch my videos then i want to make videos to explain how i think just a little bit before i go any further with my training so i've started out with predominantly uh shaolin based training or asian martial arts and now i'm taking on a little bit of the western training and learning boxing for the first time and so when I talk about boxing, um, I'm looking from the perspective of somebody that's got a black belt in like Asian martial arts. So, um, so that's where it might be fun to, um, to join me if you're um, somebody that's been doing Asian martial arts and you now want to add, you know, boxing and jujitsu to your, uh, your knowledge. So to me, I feel like this is what's going to make me a master. So I'm definitely not a master. <laughs> But I like to think I'm on a path of mastery, even if it's a slow, long path, as long as it's that, that's your general direction and you have the basic ingredients. That's the bottom line. So I'm not a very athletic person, I have some breathing problems. I feel like I can only go so far when it comes to like, you know, doing the physical training, right? But when it comes to learning the martial arts and the technical aspect of it, I feel like I did very well. I was able to, um, to do really well against other people that are actually more athletic and more able to carry out a lot of the, uh, the physical training. And so that's where I feel like um, I'm more of a technical fighter because I don't have the option of, you know, running away or or maybe um, outlasting my partner, my opponent, because I can't uh, breathe very well. So I need to make sure that I, if I have to fight in a difficult fight or fight where it's pretty serious, I want to make sure I can end the fight quickly because I don't have the stamina to keep fighting and fighting or even run away. If I ran away, they're going to catch me and then I'm not going to be able to fight. So anyways, um, we talk about, um, I wanted to briefly touch on the five elements of Xing Yi. This is the advanced training. I really feel like a beginner. You should get in there and learn boxing and learn how to turn your body and throw good hard punches for now learn how to move your head and get away from getting hit so you should start with boxing but if you keep going deeper into martial arts you're going to get into tai chi tai chi really teaches you to develop your sensitivity so you really feel everything you're doing so this is how we practice tai chi but in reality it might be like you know just a regular speed so tai chi is going to happen at a regular speed even though we practice nice and slow we go nice and slow so we can feel it, you know, so we just like develop every aspect of the movement by slowing it down. And that way you also change your time perception, your sensitivity, you get wave energy, you get the use of your whole body. But then you go into Pakwa, then we learn how to turn and twist and use the um like the four directional elements and break those down into the eight directions and all the way to sixty-four different elements. By using the Tao, like the Tao Te Ching, six hexagram. So, um, Bakwa is very much Tao. It's all this internal training. So you learn a little bit about Tao's philosophy. You don't have to become a religion for you. It's just a way of looking at nature, and universal understanding. So, where we're getting our power from is just understanding how the universe works. Like the term Aikido, for example, it's universal harmony. So you want to be tuned into the universe. You know, that's how we're gonna master life all together now. So whether you believe in God or not, um, the universe could be one big living system, just like you are a living system. And if you learn as above, so below, universal mastery, this is how we survive even better. So we apply that into our martial arts. So Bakwa is the turning and twisting. It really teaches you dragon body. Okay, so Tai Chi teaches you that snake. The Bakwa teaches you the dragon body. And then, um, that's not exactly perfect example, I'm just kind of showing you that twisting and turning is dragony. So I love that energy. Um, and then, um, Xing Yi though, it's like, 
the lightning strikes before you hear the thunder, right? So it's like, um, I was just watching the Shinyi Master on YouTube, and he's just this really slender Chinese guy with a thick accent, but when he spoke, every word was perfect and direct. So everything he does is perfect and direct in his entire life, probably. I'd love to be his passenger when he's driving, right? Everything's going to be perfect and direct when he's driving. So this becomes your lifestyle. And um, man, when you watch this guy go through his shingy, you can tell you don't want to be in front of those hits, you know, right? So um, <laughs> I wish I could recommend the video if I had some way to, uh, to send it. So maybe I'll find it and send it later. But the five elements. Um, so when we talk about the four direction elements, those are like phases of matter, like earth, water, air, and fire. Those are really like solid liquid, gaseous, you know, plasmic. So, um, that's one thing. But when we talk about the five elements, the Taoist five elements, they do, um, bring in the regard of uh, yin and yang, but in a different way. And so the five elements are the five energies. So those energies are up and down. So we call it splitting is up and down. It's just like an ax, perhaps dropping down and splitting. So, um, that's the element of metal. It's splitting. There's a color, there's an animal, there's an organ. So we get use the same thing for healing the body. So this is our yin and yang energy. And it just goes up and down. And so mostly it applies to when you're dropping your weight and getting power from that. So when you're dropping your weight, you could actually be hitting down. Like let's say I pulled somebody off balance and they're going this way. And if I were to drop this right down on their neck or something like this, um, or upwards, sometimes it's upwards, like you could be hitting up this way, the top of your arm, you know, so we might hit up and hit down, see. Also with our leg, we could be hitting up with a kind of an upward shin kick, um, probably pulling somebody off balance, bringing that shin right up. And sometimes it's expressed as a front kick that swings right up and down, if you're hitting right up and down, or typically if you're dropping your foot down, shin like an axe so there's up and down for both your hands and your feet and tai chi you might see it expressed in the opening movement there um and then wood is thrusting so we were just up and down now we're going back and forth and this is very typical to anyone that needs to throw punches so even in boxing these are basically thrusting out so it might have a lot of snap if these are going to be jabs but they can be thrusting because it's back and forth as one's coming back, the other one is shooting out. Now, in Xing Yi, it's expressed kind of holding your body square and just shooting out vertical punches. But if you're throwing a boxing punch, the same dynamic could be happening just for the fact that we're pulling back during the punch. Now, this wood is also expressed through front kicks. If it's a thrusting front kick, if you bring your knee up and then thrust your hip, this way your foot is coming forward as you're throwing that front kick. So let me get more in front of you here. So I'm going to leave my hips back and let them swing through like oh, as I'm kicking. And that's going to make it a good thrusting if somebody stand more vertical wise and you want to kick them straight in the belly. And also the reverse of that is let's say I've thrown that front kick and now someone's coming from behind. Back kick. So thrusting straight back. The mule kick is also part of that that thrusting. So very simple to d identify thrusting in anything. So there's Shing Yi itself, but then there's the expression of that energy. So once you've been through Shing Yi, um, then you start to say, oh, that would be this element. Oh, so as you learn different things, okay? Now, so wood, it's kind of funny um, how wood and water so wood is considered to be yang on the inside, yin on the outside. So before we thrust out in the uh, shingy, sometimes we do like a circular movement and then step and thrust like so, you know. And then in the water, there's kind of a back and forth side to side movement, but we can also gather that up kind of like um, whoo, whoo, before shooting out. So it can be expressed a couple different ways. Now, um, Water is uh, yin on the inside and yang on the outside. Kind of a funny uh, way of looking at these elements. So the wood seems to be expressed as more of a 
the water, after being gathered up circularly, shoots out with a twist, see? So it almost seems to be like a um, like an uppercut, but not exactly. It's more like if you were throwing one of these punches upside down. So it needs to have that twist to it when you're throwing the punch up. It's really just a reverse punch, you know? So like if this is a normal vertical punch or in boxing, we like to turn it over to an angle. This is really just its opposite. And what we get um, also out of side to side is our side hand strikes, side hand strikes, and ridge hand strikes. Okay, now um, water may also be expressed in our roundhouses coming around, cutting across this way. So coming around across this plane. Um, side to side motion may also be expressed in the sidekick. Perhaps. Now, um, I gotta plug in this phone. Oh my god, it's gonna make it a little harder for me to teach these five elements. Uh, I don't know if I should cancel this video or keep teaching, but I just feel like I want to show you the rest. So, we got two. Water. We have fire and earth to talk about, and those are the yin and yang. We're talking about xing yi, so... Oh my goodness. Well, we are going to have to try something a little different here. Now, all right, that might work. Um, now, when we're talking about fire, the element of fire, that is expressed as yang. Uh, at times when I talk about yin and yang, yin and yang is usually like yang is like the masculine. It's going to be a straightforward back and forth, like if I'm stepping straight in or moving straight back and forth. But the yin is a lot of time expressed as in going around. So yin stepping, we're going to be going around opponent. If they're thrusting at us, we're going to be the yin to their yang. Or like um, the different type of movement, stepping out of the way and hitting this way is more yin thing. So in the shingi, yin is expressed, or yang is expressed as fire. Before the fire, so fire is an explosive energy. So it's pounding, it's like exploding outwards. But before it can explode, it needs to have a way to gather and then explode. So it's going to gather up and explode. And you see this a lot of times where if this is type of a high block, kind of like in uh, Tai Chi, blocking out like that. Okay, so that inner to outer movement might be part of your high block or your outer forearm block, just the same. And then that helps bring out the other hand for a thrust or a... And Xing Yi, it's a punch that comes from here. Could be a vertical punch. So you notice in Xing Yi, when we talk about punching, we're talking about vertical punches most of the time. So some systems will tell you it's just better for your wrist to just throw vertical punches. Because once you're adding that twist on, then you're just making it more diamond, more difficult, more complicated, a more complex strike. Now, and a fire can actually be expressed in your kicks through the inner to outer crescent kick, because it's that inner to outer explosive movement, right? So um, so you probably can see it like if you're a Shaolin student and we do this here where you block across and punch out, that might be part of fire, you know, that you're getting the energy from moving across and rotating your hand out and throwing that punch. So, and then the, um, my, one of my favorite is earth or yin. And yin is gathering. And so we get like our inner forearm block and we get our low blocks as part of gathering. It's also known as crossing. So earth, like, so fire is blasting out, earth is gathering in. And now, um, so I like to think of striking and grappling as being yin and yang for that reason, because in striking, we're kind of like moving the energy from in to out. We're fighting somebody off. But in grappling, you're gathering them up. So that might apply to grappling, drawing someone in, gathering them into your center and getting them under your control or putting them on the ground. So grappling and uh, earth go hand in hand, right? Because earth is our friend in jujitsu. But then in the movement though, as you're gathering the energy to get the power, okay? Sometimes this can be expressed during a punch. So I could be gathering energy as I'm parrying and punching this way. So that could be a good gathering energy before moving on to the rest of the movement. Okay, and then um, 
you could say it's expressing our outer to inner crescent kick as well. Um, but that gathering seems to be such a dynamic one that it can express both striking and grappling. So gathering is gathering up that energy, gathering up that energy to be able to get the explosive power. So anyways, um, these five elements, um, kind of show up everywhere. Um, so Shingi shouldn't be the first thing you learn. You should really start out with striking, learning how to use brute force to begin. But then when you're good and ready, then you start weaving in your internal training. So you're going to survive by doing the hard training. If you actually need to fight, you're going to survive on the hard style training. And it's, um, you're going to be limited to stuff that is more hurdy when you're new. So like if you attack somebody that's like a green belt or a brown belt, those people rely on brute strength. You're going to be safer if you attack a master. So the same person as the attacker on the master, they might just set you on your ass and tell you um, to behave, you know, so you're not going to get brutalized by a master because that's where we go on to the softest training. So you should become a softest person long in the long run. So that's where you start um, adding in grappling training as well. Um, that way, you know, the same thing that would require you to, what say, knock somebody out, have them risk falling down and cracking their noggin, you could end the same fight with some nice gentle grappling, see? So um, the kind of martial artist I want to be is one that, you know, you attack me, it's like running into a big wad of fluff, maybe. You just run into this big wad of fluff that just stops everything and just... So you want to be, like... A, if you're a good fighter, you're just trying to stop the fight. Otherwise, if you're a mean fighter, there's all kinds of nasty, rotten things you could do if somebody decides to attack you. We could just, I could la na la name a long list of rotten, nasty things you could do about it. But if those aren't necessary, then you're actually, then you're just abusing somebody. E even though they seem like they're asking for it, maybe they were asking for it, but um, if you're the better person, you're going to use soft fist, you're going to use your grappling and and maybe some of your Tai Chi and nice things. So that's the direction I hope we're headed in as, um, you know, as a civilian uh, fighter, you know, as a civilian martial artist, um, that we're not training for military purposes. But uh, similar to police, I think that uh, similarly, we should just be training to bring somebody under control who um, hopefully is normally a good person that's just not in their right mind. So that's where the compassion and the, um, the camaraderie, you know, there's a fellow human being. Um, depending on the nature of the fight, um, you have everything from, you know, how to um, end a fight in one punch to, you know, how to end a fight with a nice gentle hug. I love you, bud, brother, but I ain't gonna let you get up and fight no more. Anyways, I'm gonna end this here and I'll talk to you soon, bye-bye now.